Casper, what's your favorite opening response to one default? Well, the truth is there are many, not one. First of all, if I'm playing in a serious tournament and my opponent plays pawn to d4 on the first move, I would consider playing the move pawn to e6 if I am sure that they are going to play pawn to c4 on the second move. I would then play pawn to c5. Entering into my favorite, how is defense where I put my dark squad bishop on f6 and my king's knight on g6, then push pawn to d6 followed by knight bd7 and pop pop in the near future and all that but there's another secret opening response i would consider playing in a serious otb game especially in the tournament if i don't know my opponent's preparation i can consider playing pawn to c6 in the hope of transposing back to the karakan defense after e4 but the main idea after c6 is if they play pawn to c4 now i can go pawn to d5 transposing into the slav one thing i like about the slav is moves are very much predictable if you look into the master's database you will find that knight f3 is the top played move so most people play the main line knight f3 which is one thing i like and this is when i divert a little bit from the main line instead of playing knight f6 or pawn to e6 going into the semi slav here i'll just take on c4 then after pawn to e3 i put my bishop on e6 in fact if you look into the master's database bishop e6 on move number four in this slav modern line is the top played move this is what super grandmasters prefer to play in this position so with bishop e6 I'm just preventing white from taking my c4 pawn and well the real intention is to replace my d pawn with my light squad bishop so if white allows i'll be happy to put my bishop on d5 so that it acts like a bigger pawn and given a chance i would love to take on f3 so that white stops thinking about knight a5 in the middle game anyway two moves that are played in this position are a4 at the top level and knight c3 the top played move in the leeches database with pawn to a4 white is just trying to stop you from you know connecting your pawns on the queen side because they thought that's what you were up to but see the thing is we are not even thinking of playing pawn to b5 in this line even if white doesn't play pawn to a4 that'll be a sheer waste of time in fact after b5 pawn takes and cb white intends to play knight c3 attacking that pawn and maybe someday just planting that knight either on e4 or a4 so you don't want to play what they already know or what they anticipate this is when i would play bishop d5 because with bishop d5 i'm stopping pawn to e4 and also inviting the move knight c3 and just satisfying my real intention of replacing my d pawn with my light squad bishop say after knight c3 well this is when i would consider playing knight f6 by the way moves can be interchanged instead of playing bishop d5 right away on move number five you can start with knight f6 the main line and after white plays knight c3 this is when you play bishop d5 with this combination of moves you are stopping white from playing e4 not to mention that white can no longer take your c4 pawn see how safe this opening is you guys if you check the leeches database most people play knight e5 in this position why i don't know but this is when you can play knight bd7 Oh, I see. The whole idea of playing knight e5 is to take on c4 with the knight, which is a sheer waste of time in my opinion. Another option is to go pawn to f3, then pawn to e4 later on. In this position, say white takes on c4, because what else do they know? Well, now you can simply play pawn to e6 safely. If they take, well and good, you're going to take back with your e pawn so that you have an open file for your king's rook along the e file which will be useful in the middle game white doesn't have to play knight e5 back you just take and after pawn takes you simply go knight e4 and they can't play f3 due to queen h4 check and they will probably lose the rook not to mention that we are preparing to go bishop b4 check so they have to play bishop d2 after which you just take and after queen takes this is when you go queen h4 a very sneaky move by the way just trying to create some weaknesses on the king side for example if white continues playing normal looking moves like bishop e2 or bishop d3 it doesn't matter you have this sneaky move bishop b4 pinning the queen to the king supported by your queen so in this position after queen h4 white may be forced to play pawn to g3 or something like queen d4 it doesn't even matter anyway pop and now you go queen e4 
this is what i like you guys attacking the rook and somehow forcing them to you know lose their right to castle in advance and only then do you play bishop b4 once again look at that who are you lebron james anyway so this is to say after you play bishop d5 or before that Whenever you see the move knight e5 by white, always think of this combo or sometimes pawn to f3. For example, say you play knight bd7 and they don't take on c4 immediately. Sometimes you will see your opponents playing pawn to f3 intending to go e4 next. I'm just showing you these things in advance. The purpose of playing knight bd7 by the way is to take on e5. Believe it or not, allowing white to take like this and yep, you go knight bd7 intending to take. If pawn to e4 is played, you still have bishop e6, you just want to take and you don't mind exchanging queens in this position. Your position is very solid. If pawn to f4 is played, holding on to their pawn, look at your position. It looks a little bit cramped and there's no way you're going to develop your death squad bishop along the highlighted diagonal. So you have to play a logical move pawn to g6 also stopping pawn to f5 so that your bishop is not trapped this is logical no memorization needed i've seen people playing pawn to g4 here still wanting to trap your last squad bishop but hey first you can go knight c5 and free up your last squad bishop like this you can also play pawn to f5 if you don't know what to do exactly but the move i like in this position is this tactical move queen a5 and the whole idea is if white continues with a5 now i castle long this is just a tactical move you guys involving some nasty traps knight takes e5 discovery on the queen if they play something like queen c2 here uh, of course obviously queen e2 invites knight d3 check or something like that so queen c2 makes a lot of sense now this is when you can go knight f3 anyways you make white lose his right to castle and then you play something like knight d4 who has some activity sometimes in chess it's not just about how many pieces you have it's about how many active pieces you have if they do this maybe you have this right and win the rook if they play something like queen d2 again you have knight b3 maybe they will play something like queen b1 after which you have so many things to do for example queen e5 is one thing if pawn takes you simply go queen f6 who are you if king g1 you simply have knight f3 check say king g2 you have knight e1 check and sooner or later you are going to mate your opponent in fact in this position there's a mate in two which i would love you guys to find you guys don't just watch my videos i also want you guys to participate Bit. don't just make use of your eyeballs your elbow also needs to work anyway so what am i talking about once again after you start with the slav defense and then after knight f3 you change your mind by taking accepting the queen's gambit later in the game you still play bishop e6 we saw how you can continue after white plays a4 in this position and remember i said after pawn to a4 you just continue with your normal development either knight f6 or bishop d5 or vice versa you don't really pay attention to this move pawn to b5 once again if white plays knight c3 yes b5 is okay you can play b5 anytime you want but be rest assured after this move white always has pawn to a4 they are very much prepared in this line so you just want to keep it simple go knight f6 it won't hurt what if white plays pawn to e4 immediately well now you don't have bishop d5 right there are so many things that you can do bishop g4 get rid of that knight or now you can even play pawn to b5 this is just how flexible you should be in chess not just depending on one plan and after something like bishop e2 for example you even have pawn to b4 here attacking the knight the knight has to go back or go to a4 after which you take that free pawn on e4 and then you have bishop d5 next oh instead of bishop e2 say in this position white plays queen c2 just defending their e4 pawn in advance two lines you can continue with pawn to g6 you can carry your dark squad bishop and castle short or just play bishop g4 get rid of that play pawn to e6 develop your bishop normally and castle short so at the end of the day there is no much theory involved in fact you can apply similar ideas even against the london system set up where you begin with pawn text as usual pawn to e3 you are happy to play bishop e6 followed by knight f6 if white plays bishop f4 immediately you can continue with the same setup if you don't mind not thinking about pawn to b5 again you just want to fianchero your bishop and castle shot that's fine 
I mean, 0 to b5 is okay. But whenever I see this move, I want to quickly put my knight on d5 instead of my light squad bishop. So I begin with knight f6 and after pawn to e3, this is when I play knight d5. Why? Because I just want to get rid of that active London bishop. They play bishop g3, they love their bishop, after which I now play pawn to b5, changing my plan back to normal. If pawn to e4, I just go back to f6, no pressure. Here you will see most of your opponents playing pawn to a4. This is what they are told. But now I can go pawn to e6. Because after all, if pawn takes, I'll just take back, maintaining my pawn structure on the queen side. They play knight c3. Here I can even go pawn to b4 if I want to keep everything simple. And then take back with my e pawn. Look at these well advanced pawns. a5 is coming if white is not careful. But you see, in this position, Stockfish doesn't like pawn to b4 really. The move is bishop b4, pinning the knight to the king. And after queen c2, defending, you go queen a5, putting more pressure on the knight. Say rook c1, defending. Well, this is when you can even take on a4 with your queen. And after queen takes, you have a passed pawn. Either your a4 pawn or your a7 pawn. See how powerful this opening response is. Instead of pawn to c4, some of your opponents will play knight f3 just here. But you can still go pawn to d5. I mean, who are you? You know, if they play pawn to c4, you just take and put your bishop on e6. Once again, if they play something else like bishop f4. Well, this time you don't have knight f6 and knight d5. But you see, these are standard positions where you begin with knight f6. And immediately white plays pawn to e3, the top played move. This is when I would play the top played move in the master's database, bishop g4. Why bishop g4? Masters just don't want to deal with knight e5 in the middle game. So that's why they play bishop g4 in this position. It is safe just to get rid of that knight. If pawn to h3, you can just take and play knight bd7 yourself, followed by pawn to e6, bishop d6, and play normal chess from there. Now, time for you to go and check out my new e5 defense course, which I have also linked in the comment section down below. And I'm glad to say, so far it has received a lot of attention and people are getting it like crazy. So it's an opening response that you try against white's e4 opening. You're going to learn how to play against the scorch, the royal pairs, the bishop's opening, three knights opening the four nights game the vienna game even the italian game so it's the complete e5 defense course that i just launched with my team you better go and check it out thank you so much for watching this video until next time have a wonderful day bye bye